Hey guys, welcome back to Stylized Station. And I've been doing a lot of messing around with Mixer and I've come up with a good process to create some stylized wooden mixer. And I wanted to share the process with you totally for free. I'm gonna share the mixer file, the finished file, the OBJ file, everything you need is gonna be for free on my Gumroad. I'll leave a link in the description so you guys can download it for yourself. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so first things first, before we get texturing, I wanna show you guys how to load a custom mesh into Mixer. It's super easy um, if you've got everything done already. So all you have to do is go into the setup tab here and you can load your custom model in. So I have one that's ready to go. And again, this is this model and the maps are gonna be free to download on my Gumroad and I'll leave a link in the description. So let's just search for Axe. It's gonna be in here. Let's just load it in and it instantly loads in, super easy. Now there's a few things that are missing. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to add the normal information on here as well so we can get all the sculpted details. So let's open up the normals and let's load it in and I believe I had it in right here. So all you do is you select it and you can see right here all of the normal detail and all the normal information is is loaded in it's super easy so that's actually pretty much it if you have anything else you want to put in you can do that but for now all we need is the normal information because we're going to take the curvature information from this as well so let's get right into texturing let's get right into it so we've got our base layer and what we're going to do is we're going to make sure the roughness is nice and high because we're going to go for a more stylized color great and we're going to change the albedo to a dark red, just like all my other videos. So we're only really gonna be worrying about how it looks on here and a bit of here, but we're not gonna mask anything out. So let's go ahead and add a nice dark red color. Something like that. That may be pretty red, but again, it's stylized, so we can kind of go as bright and as saturated as we want. So that's pretty good. So the next thing we're gonna do is, instead of having just this flat base color, we want to add some color variation in there, right? So we're going to add some more layers. To add another layer, you're going to add a solid layer and right and click and it's added a blank, completely blank layer on top of it. Now we want to actually just isolate some colors so that they appear on here. So we're going to need to mask in some colors. So you can do that by right clicking, add a mask stack. And then from here, you've got generators here, just like in Substance Painter. So you can add a mask component and we're gonna add a pattern, or I think we're gonna, add, uh, let's add a noise to it. So the first thing we're gonna choose a noise and it doesn't really matter. You guys can mess around with, um, you guys can mess around with the colors and whatever you want. So let's go with the Perlin for now. And you can see this color is now being filled in by that map, right? So we can manipulate this and get all sorts of different colors. We can increase the amplitude, which increases the intensity. Um, if you really want strong color variation, you can do that. And the frequency, so we can increase where it, um, uh, we can increase the actual noise pattern itself and a lot of stuff like that. So let's go ahead and choose a slightly lighter color once you've got a nice pattern that you enjoy. And let's take the albedo of this color or of this layer and we'll use the color picker to choose the same color as before and we're just going to make it a little bit brighter and maybe a little less saturated so let's get now we've got some actual color variation in here now this is too extreme for me and if you want to see the actual color let's go to albedo and this this color variation is a little too much for me so let's go back to the map and decrease the amplitude a little bit and to me that looks better and maybe drop the frequency just a little bit. Great, so now we've got some beautiful color variation in here and only really using two layers. So let's go back to the PBR metalness. And that's starting to look pretty good. So I also like to double up on things. So let's go ahead and do it again and maybe add a darker one this time. So add a solid layer, right click it, mask stack, and let's add another noise and let's do another Perlin noise again. So this one's gonna be a little darker and I want, I don't want it to be too dramatic. Let's move the seat around a bit and let's increase the frequency. Yeah, that looks okay to me. 
So I would just recommend playing around with it to get the color that you like. And I really want to pull back some of these colors. So let's see what happens if we go super extreme. So we're cool with that. And now let's go add a nice dark color. Darker than the other two. So now if we go to our albedo, you can see we've got some really cool color splotches in there too. There's a lot of stuff you can actually do with this. You can start adding blur and you can posterize, um, which you know I would always recommend messing around with. So if you really want that stylized look, you can posterize as well. Um, and then you can also uh, do some, you can blur it back out. Um, but let's not worry about that right now. And let's see how it looks like with this. Okay, so the posterizing is a little too extreme. But that's it. Uh, three layers. We've basically got our base color down. And I would turn up the roughness just slightly on each one. Let's go all the way to one. And just like that, you've got your base layer done. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add some curvature um, to these edges to make the edges pop a little bit, which is a very important part of stylized art. So let's go ahead and add another layer. And one more time, right click, add a mass stack. This time we're going to be using the curvature generator. So go ahead and click on curvature. And you can see it's starting to pick out the actual colors itself. If you want to get more specific, you can select the default curvature to edges only. And then from there, now you can see it's really only selecting the edges. With wood, all the edges are always worn out, right? Especially if it's a handle like this that's been getting quite a bit of use. So it's really cool to see that you can isolate the edges just like this in Mixer. And it's very easy to use. Now you can pull in the tightness if you want some tighter lines. But I personally don't think that looks too good, so let's control Z or Z. And you can also mess with the levels. So you can pull in the white values and you can pull out the black values. Now what we're going to do is we're going to choose just a slightly lighter color than our base layer and desaturate it just ever so slightly and maybe add a little bit more. You just want it to be just lighter than the actual wood itself. So there we go. We've got a nice white curvature layer there. Let's switch to colors so you can see better. It's a little extreme, so let's switch here. Maybe pull it up to right here. So that looks a lot better. That's pretty good. Okay, so let's continue to work in the um, in the albedo port. So let's go ahead and add one of the final steps, which is the ambient occlusion. So we have to add some dirt and grime into the cracks to really take this to another level. So let's go ahead and add a solid layer, right click, add a mass stack, and we're gonna do the exact same thing. We're gonna add a curvature, but this time we're only gonna select the cavities. So now you can see the map is selecting the white parts, are selecting only the parts that are in shadow, just like that. And you can pull it back, increase it, whatever you want. I like it right there. And pull the levels in if you wanna make it a little brighter. That works for me. And now let's go ahead and make it a nice dark color, just like that. So that adds another layer of depth to it. And you can see it's very subtle, but it is a noticeable difference. Just like that. And already we've got a great looking, great looking piece of wood. And since it's just a quick tutorial, I'm just gonna do one more thing just to show you guys what else you can do. Let's go ahead and switch back to Albedo. And for the overall piece, let's just go ahead and add a gradient as well. So we're going to add another solid layer one more time. Add a mask stack. And this time we're going to add a position gradient generator. And you can see here, it's based on the position of the asset. It's going to create a map that you can isolate up and down, and if you want to mess with the angles, left and right as well. So typically with assets and gradients, you really want to make sure that it's pointing, um, that the dark part and wherever it's traveling to is pointing to the main part of the asset and it will naturally draw people's eyes. So I want to make sure that the bottom is slowly drawing your eye to the main part, which is the head of the ax. So now that that's done, let's pull it down just a little bit pull it down slightly. So now it's pointing to just the head of the ax. We can add a nice gradient and a nice dark color. 
that will add a gradient to point to the top of the axe. So let's go ahead and just add a darker color again with a bit of red in it. If you want to add some yellow, green, blues, go for it, whatever you want, but let's stick with red for now. And that's got a bit of yellow in it, so let's change it. A little darker red. There we go, almost black. So just like that. And now you can see that it added another layer of, um, just another layer of depth to the piece with the gradient. And we can go back here, just like that. It's actually got a high reflectivity, but that's okay. I think it's the lighting that we're using. Um, they all tend to have a bit of a high reflectivity on the piece, but as you cycle through, you can see it looks pretty general. And that's pretty much it, guys. Um, that's all I wanted to show you. Um, I'm going to be doing some more mixer tutorials down the road, so give this a like, thumbs up, subscribe, leave a comment if you uh, actually enjoyed doing some mixer stuff. I'm obviously still pretty new to the software and I'm learning just as you guys are. Um, the main thing is I wanted to show you that if I can do this, you guys can definitely do it too. So I hope you learned something from this. Mixer is a really cool product. I really hope um, these guys continue to develop it and make it better. And I will see you guys in the next video.